It is September 5th of 2024 and TrueNAS Scale 24.10 beta has been released. This is the electric eel release. Now, a couple of big changes, of course, and why I'm doing a beta test and while I was actually testing the nightlies and beta on a few different servers is because this version gets rid of the underlying Kubernetes and replaces it with just pure Docker. Now, the templates look the same, and you'll notice when we go through this, the UI hasn't really changed much here for the way applications work, but the CPU cycles it uses to just sit and idle have gone down substantially. The Kubernetes had a lot going on underneath, and yeah, I never really Really thought it was a great implementation. I've been critical of it in the past, and I think this is a much faster path forward, especially because the applications deploy so much faster and, as I noted, use less CPU cycles. Other notable expansions in here, and I said expansion is kind of alluding to ZFS expansion. This is something we've talked about for many years. I've mentioned it quite a long time ago on the channel that it was in progress. The reason this progress takes so long is, one, this is very difficult code, and two, uh, you don't want to rush something like this that manages is your storage server. So it's good to see that this is a new feature in there. I'm not going to be testing it much in this video. I just want to mention it. Uh, the other features are going to be the updated dashboard and a few other things that IX Systems kind of baked in there, I think are really cool. So let's get started. <music> Are you an individual or forward thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that'll get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now there is a full change log, which I'll leave linked down below for all the upcoming features. Seeing that it's beta right now, this won't change too much in terms of what they're putting in here. But one of the things I really want to point out is things like extending a RAID-Z VDEV they've already got documentation updated for. So they're real time updating all the documentation, even though it's in beta. So by the time this is released, these functions will be pretty accessible and documented. And of course, I'll be making plenty of videos as well. Now, a couple of big changes that I want to point out right away is the dashboard. We still have the old dashboard, which doesn't look that much different, but when we configure it, it's pretty basic in terms of what you can do to customize it. The new dashboard, when we hit configure, has the ability to move all the widgets around so we can swap maybe where we want the widgets to land, or you can edit the individual widgets and change different layouts, such as a four panel layout, and pick a widget for each one of these, including custom widgets. And I imagine there's gonna be a lot more options for this. I really like this as a feature to give you more customization to what you wanna see when you first log in. And it's rather intuitive to just be able to drag, drop, save, or add new widgets. Also worth noting, when we hit cancel and scroll all the way down here, some of them, such as the IP address, I kind of like it. It's just big and bold. We know exactly what server we're on and what IP addresses are attached to it. I think these are nice quality of life enhancements they're doing. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is universal search. The universal search, for example, like global 2FA enable, I made sure when I was pointing out in my hardening video, how to find this and where to go through the menus. If you don't feel like going through the menus, well, now we have the global search up here so we can get to specifically what we're looking for or switch back and maybe want to look up the user table. So we can go to credentials users or even right to add a user and it's highlighting it for us to let us know how to add that user. This UI element change, I think, is going to make it a lot more intuitive for the first timers with TrueNAS, and even someone experienced like myself, it's handy for finding lots of the things. Now let's talk about the apps. They look much the same, so I have Qt, BitTorrent, and Sync thing here, and this was an in-place upgrade from Dragonfish, and these apps came right over. Of note, if we go over to Discover Apps, the File Browser app, which was installed before the upgrade, did not come over and I'm really not sure why. I thought that was a little strange, but it's still here to install. It just seems to have removed it. I wasn't able to repeat this across several other ones. I didn't 
see any other apps that didn't show up when I did the upgrade on the other systems, but I uh, thought it was just worth noting. But once again, it's a beta and the apps really do work much the same. So when we edit like the sync thing, one, if we were to deploy a new instance, it very much is the same template, even though it's just lacking the Kubernetes on the back end, it's going straight Docker. Something else I noticed is there are no more options and maybe they'll come in the future. We can choose the pool, we can unset the pool, we can manage container image or change the train settings, but there's no more network options because Kubernetes has this extra layer of underlying networking and it doesn't choose what IP it binds to, it binds to all of them. So this particular server has two IP addresses and therefore it's bound to TCP 0000 and then the different ports on all the IPs at once with no option to change that and maybe that will change in the future. As I noted, this is a beta and that may be another element that they're adding. Now, in terms of being able to see the logs, see the containers, it's pretty straightforward like it was before. The added bonus, of course, is if you go to the command line, all your Docker commands are much easier because you can just use Docker PS, list the containers and use what you might use for Docker for troubleshooting. And I think this is nice because it just makes it a whole lot easier to deal with the applications. Now, while they do have a nice list of apps in here, the one thing I didn't really see was an easy way at this time to load a Docker application from here. But of course, if you did it from the command line, that should work, but those applications probably won't show up in management here. So that's a little bit of uncharted territory that I haven't really tested, uh, but I like the fact that they have just standard Docker underneath. So you could probably load some other tools and it may be one of those a little bit off topics that I dive into is what happens if you load another manager for Docker, will it work with Dockage? Will it work with Portainer? That'll be kind of an interesting thing to see if there's any issues with it and does that survive upgrades? I know that's way off the rails here in terms of what TrueNAS was meant for, but hey, this is a lot of people's home lab where they want to play and poke at things. And it's certainly how I would like to play and poke at things. It's not something I would recommend in a production environment, but hey, lab environments, it's fair game to see what breaks. Now, under data protection, we have a new feature called True Cloud Backup Tasks. And this is rather clever. It lets you use credentials and specifically a stored J account in order to have an automated way to do backups of your TrueNAS and make it a little bit simpler than some of the other cloud credentials. The other cloud sync options are there, but this one is specific with its own task settings, keep last, password, because you can encrypt it before it goes. And I like the integration with storage J here for those that are using it. It's something I've been kind of playing around with on the back end here and there, but it probably something now that it's integrated like this, something I'll test a lot further. That being said, I do know there is a bug report for this where the schedule isn't working properly, uh, but that is fixed in the nightlies and it's not fixed in the beta right now. So if you switch to the nightlies, that will fix it. But you know, just one of those little things to note in case you do test this out. Now, the other feature coming to TrueNAS Scale 2410, of course, is ZFS expansion. And I've done a video on that before, but this is where you can add singular drives to a VDEV instead of having to do symmetrical VDEV expansion. This was sponsored by Ag Systems, the company behind TrueNAS. So I'm really excited that this is a feature and it will get its own dedicated video after I set my lab up and do a bunch of playing around with it. I've done a video before about imbalanced VDEVs when you add things later, because the challenge is when there's already data on there, it's not going to be evenly distributed across the drives. So that'll be a big part where I dive deep into explaining what the problems that come with something like that. And of course, how to get around those issues. Now there's some other features like fast deduplication, also sponsored by Ag Systems. Good to see that coming in there. Uh, that means I'll probably do an updated deduplication video because this is going to make it a better feature. And uh, I encourage any of you to test that out. Now, before you're testing anything out, that is beta, make sure you back that NAS up. And if you want this shirt, you'll find it over at my shirt store and leave your thoughts and comments down below. Love hearing from you. Love to know if you're willing to test the beta version or if you're waiting until uh, the rest of us go through and report bugs and, you know, get them all sorted out before you try it. But, you know, I do encourage if you have an extra system or maybe a backup system, uh, play around with it. Or if you were waiting to move off of TrueNAS Core, if this is the version because the Kubernetes is now gone because it's less resource intensive. Yeah, this is is probably a good time to start looking at it, maybe set up a system and start playing with it. But that's what I really encourage with these betas is this is how we get the ecosystem to be better. Like and subscribe to see more from the channel. Head on my forums. If you want to have a more in-depth discussion about this, head over to the TrueNAS forums to talk about it there. There's plenty of posts about Electric Eel and oh, that's where you can participate in the community. And I'll see you online. Thanks.